guys, Pinty sent me a product to review, so let's take a look at this. This is what they are calling a 4-in-1 rifle scope. Here is the model number. It is HRS165077, and you can see where it's made. On the box here, it says it has a wide field of view. It's shock and recoil proof, fully coated lenses, and it's constructed from aircraft grade aluminum alloy. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. Now there is a lot to cover with this product, so the warning, this is most likely going to be a long video. Okay, little foam padding. Right here on top we have a whole bunch of batteries, different size batteries for all of the different components as well as a owner's manual. It comes with a 223-556 laser bore sight. This is an aluminum mount for the laser that comes with the scope. Here we have the laser which this mount goes to. It comes with a bikini style lens covers. Here is a reflex sight, and we'll be taking a closer look at all of this. And here we have the scope. And that's pretty much everything that comes in the box. Okay, off camera I installed the batteries in these uh, different components of this product. And the CR123 battery that they provide for the laser, well this was dead. There was no power in it whatsoever. So luckily I had one on hand that I put in there and it works fine now and the battery compartment for the lighted reticle on this that cap was on there so tight I couldn't get it off by hand I actually had to take a pair of pliers and hold it and use a screwdriver to unscrew it and then once I put the battery in there I had a difficult time getting the cap back on the uh, the springs that are inside that cap they I in my opinion they protrude a little bit too far and I had to press down quite a bit I use a lot of pressure to get the uh, the cap to thread back on so this really isn't starting off on a positive note all right let's take a closer look at the scope and like the box said this is a machine from an aircraft grade aluminum alloy this is a 4 to 16 power magnification. It has a 50 millimeter objective lens. And as you can see there, it has some very aggressive serrations on it. And you have to be careful. These, these things are sharp. You can easily hurt yourself on that. Uh, it looks to be a 30 millimeter tube. It has a, uh, an integrated or a built on mounting system for a Picatinny rail then you have uh, Picatinny rails on the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions so you can hang other accessories off of there the uh, turrets are tool free for adjustments and they are audible but they really aren't tactile. I mean, you can, you can feel it, but not very much. And that is goes for both uh, windage and elevation. Now the windage, or excuse me, the, yeah, the windage 
is a little louder. Yeah, definitely a little louder on the windage adjustments. Um, like I said, it's 4 to 16 power. It has a uh, built-on throw lever right there. And this is actually really stiff. It's kind of hard to turn. And to be honest with you, this little uh, compartment here where the battery goes for the lighted reticle is it's in the way of making adjustments and if that wasn't there the adjustments would be easier okay so getting to that it does have a lighted reticle you can choose from either red or green and there's five different brightness settings and we will take a look of that at that uh, soon it has the uh, a diopter, or I call it an adjustment ring, but it's a diopter, and that is very smooth. It, that turns fairly easily. I mean, it, it does have some uh, some tension on it, so it's not going to move under recoil, but it is very smooth to turn. Uh, that's pretty much it for this so uh, let's take a look at the reticle all right let's take a look through the scope here and uh, that target is set up at 25 yards and I do apologize if it's not a, a crisp clean picture the viewfinder on my camera is very small and I'm having a hard time seeing how focused that is but I assure you to the naked eye for a budget price scope this thing is amazingly clear so it's set up on four power now which is the lowest so let's bump it up a little bit and there is six power there's eight power there's ten There's 14, and all the way to 16. So let's take a look at the lighted reticle on this scope, and I can see I'm getting a pretty bad glare off of it, so I'm going to try and shield it the best I can. So let's uh, turn it on. Okay, there's the first green setting and there are five different brightnesses there's two three four five and then off the next one is red is the lowest setting there's a second setting, there's quite a jump between the colors or the brightness of the first and second setting on both colors. And there's three, four, five, and off. All right, let's take a look at the laser that's provided with the scope. Now this is a class 3A laser and it is green and they say that this is good for out to 300 meters you have your windage and elevation turrets here and you do need a tool to make those adjustments it is slightly audible it is actually more tactile than it is audible and this is actually a little more tactile than the uh, scope is. And it comes with a lightweight aluminum mount. Slides right out here. And you use the same tool for installation on the mount. Let's take a look at the reflex sight that comes with the scope. This does have a hard plastic cover. Keep the sight nice and safe while in storage here we have the reflex sight 
This has a uh, top load battery right in here. To access the battery, you remove the uh, two screws that are in there. And it takes a CR2032 battery, which uh, this kit actually does come with batteries. It comes with two. One of them I installed into the scope. And then one already comes installed in the reflex site. Uh, this comes with a uh, built-on Picatinny mount. Here we have the on-off switch. It's right here. It's a slide switch. And this this reflex sight only has two brightnesses, low and high. And if you move the switch to the center position, that's low. All the way to the right, that's high. Here are your windage and elevation adjustments. And you need a uh, tool which is provided to make those adjustments. Now these are not tactile whatsoever. There are zero clicks. It's just very easily moves but uh, the good thing uh, well one of the features I guess with with that is once you have set your zero you tighten down these two screws which locks your zero in place it has a uh, knob on the side to install it on top of the scope or a Picatinny rail so let's take a look at that red dot. So let's take a look at the dot on this reflex sight. I'm going to move the switch over to the center, which is the low setting. Now I can barely see it in the viewfinder, but uh, believe me, to the naked eye, it is very visible. Let's switch it over to high. Now that is showing up well in the viewfinder. And it doesn't look like a very clean dot, but in all transparency, I do have an astigmatism, so I have to keep that in mind. So let's take a look at the laser sight that they provide. This has a class 3A laser. It is red. It runs off of three of these LR41 batteries, and they do provide two sets of batteries with the uh, kit. And they recommend that this is used anywhere from 15 to 100 yards to uh, sight in your scope. And this has a 2 MOA dot at 100 yards. All right, let's see if the uh, laser sight that comes with the scope is calibrated correctly. I have my little jig that I had made here to test these things out. As you can see, the dot right there, and it's a, a fairly clean dot. So to, to see if it's calibrated correctly, we simply just turn it or spin it. And I can see that the dot is staying in one spot. So yeah that is pretty much calibrated correctly now that we've taken a look at everything that comes in the kit i'm going to assemble it the way that pinty designed it to be okay so i have this mall ninja scope all put together the way it was designed to be put together this is something else take these uh protective caps off and you have your laser connected to the left side of the scope the reflex sight connected to the top and the right side is open for another accessory you can always put a flashlight on there if you'd like So, um, I want to make a suggestion to Pinty. Uh, a couple things you may want to consider in this design. This has a lot of sharp edges on it. And, uh, you know, that's people are easily going to hurt themselves with it. You know, especially that 
aggressive uh, bezel on the end of the scope here. Matter of fact, a couple days ago I was getting to know this scope, so uh, I knew what I was talking about when I turned the camera on and the this little sharp edge on the mount right here caught my finger. So got a little battle wound from this uh, review. And another suggestion, Pinty, uh, you may want to consider getting rid of these big knobs like this here and these two here and go with the flush mountings like on the uh, laser that's just there's just less to uh, for your clothing and what not to get hung up on when these uh, these, these fasteners are flush w with the mount just a just a suggestion all right so I need to figure out what I'm gonna what rifle I'm gonna put this on and I have a pretty good idea what that is so let's get that done so there it is on one of my rifles and if for any reason you guys are interested in the scope you want to take a look at it you'll find links down below I am going to use the laser sight that came with this and sight in that scope as best I can before I hit the range so hopefully I'll, at least I'll be on paper so the uh, next time you see this scope, we'll be at the range testing it out. So that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later.